<clears throat> okay, we are back. We are back for our holiday special show. <clears throat> happy Festivus, happy winter solstice Yule, and hail Krampus. We're back. All right, let us return to our readings. I am James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, and uh, I am here with my partner, uh, talk show, my talk show partner, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman. I right, continue. Governor Christie's remarks over the past few days attacking the head of the PBA, the New Jersey Education Association, <laughs> Democratic State Senators Loretta Weinberg of Teaneck, Paul Sarlo of Woodridge, and Stephen Sweeney of Gloucester, and the media all reflect vintage Christie on the one hand, but also demonstrate a new desperation that will only increase over the next few months. That's the old cowardly, snarling bully hiding behind his security detail. Well, only Chris Christie is allowed to to uh, make uh, a decent income and achieve the American dream. Uh, no, no other profession in New Jersey is allowed to be happy and, and live well. Who's he? Who elected him? I'm the governor. Are some things he has said. It's dictatorial comment. As for Luke Margolis, a former newsman and now Senate aide, he is another genius, according to the governor. <clears throat> it's no coincidence this developed after Donald Trump called him out on the George Washington Bridge. The court case is right around the corner. Yeah, and he and he said some nasty things about Barack Obama, the guy who he was hugging practically, and you know when he needed a uh, uh, Storm Sandy uh, um, FEMA money. The unindicted un coast conspirators may eventually be named. One time, Christie aide Bridget Ann Kelly is not about to take the fall unless there is a plea bargain, which would be the governor's worst nightmare. Well, so, if, you're, if your head's on a chopping block, I would say um, take everybody down with you. So, Christie lashes out at all the usual suspects, and then some. In so doing, he proves that his claim that he did not set a tone of vicious petty behavior is absurd. He exposes himself in his last desperate attacks while he still holds office, an office he has completely neglected, while running a campaign based on denial why don't these, of his real record. Well, why don't all these other people um, in New Jersey expose him? How come they don't speak up and expose this man for what he has not done and what he has done that is negative. Nobody's speaking up in New Jersey. You know? They're pussies. <clears throat> I saw the statement by Governor Christie about union pigs. Too bad. Too bad. Too damn bad if people require and are entitled to a living wage and benefits. He don't like it. Too bad. Let me tell a story about real people and how they live. Who, Christie saying this? Oh, the, the, the writer. Oh, okay. I worked as a restaurant server for more than 32 years. I actually made a pretty good living, although the work was long and exhausting. Tips. He made money on tips. And I still had a house to run and a family to feed. However, I had no benefits. There was no medical insurance. Motherfucking restaurant owners. 
nor were there paid uh, sick or a vacation days, and no thought of the future in terms of a pension. Freddie had some cheap motherfucking European restaurant owner that didn't want to give him any benefits. The upside of this story is I am married to a union iron worker. So my kids had medical insurance, were able to go to college. Thank God. And we were able to take an occasional vacation. Now that we are retired, our home is free and clear. We have an adequate pension and are able to live a decent life in our golden years. So the union job in that family, like many, many multitudes of families. Savior. What is the savior? And it's the union that that is responsible for that family having the benefits that they so rightfully deserve. All right, go ahead. It is the unions who have made the middle class. And the, the labor laws that we have today uh, came from uh, the blood, sweat, and tears of unions. Yes, but unfortunately they were undone there's, by the corporation. There's more to be, yes, they were undone thanks to uh, the puppet, Ronald Reagan. Might as, might as well put the blame on him, the Hollywood actor. I cannot imagine where we would be or how we would survive Without my husband's union, employers give you nothing without the strength and determination of the union. I salute unions. I will hereby dedicate this show to America's unions. Feel the burn. If Christie wants to see greedy pigs, just take a look at some politicians. Take a look at himself in the mirror. Power <laughs> is their mistress. And greed is their driving force. Absolutely. It's time for Christy to keep his mouth shut. Yeah, Christy has been really shooting his mouth off, uh, especially since he's... Um, at the bottom of the barrel in the campaigning, huh? Yeah, that he is. Percentage-wise. He knows nothing about the real people of New Jersey. No, he just claims he knows he's in touch with New Jerseyans. He just, he claims a lot. Yeah, I would say. You know, um, he's a very good liar. Because he, uh, he acts acts, uh, he behaves very, eh, I was going to say passionate about his opinions, but nah, he's just an obnoxious bully. Blowhard. Bully, bully, bully! Bully, 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 bully. Oh, uh, 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 Sam, uh, Sham and the Pharaohs? Bully, bully. Bully, bully. Bully, bully. Zimbabwe! Zimbabwe, Africa. Is no longer pressing for the extradition of Walter Palmer, the American dentist who killed the well known lion Cecil. A cabinet minister said on Monday. Somebody got paid off. Palmer can now safely return to Zimbabwe. I bet you somebody in Zimbabwe got paid off as a tourist because he had not broken the southern African country's hunting law. Well, Africa's loaded with poachers. Environment, water and climate minister Apwa Muchinguri Kajuri say. Kajuri, yeah, Kajuri, Kajuri, I bet casually took a bribe from the dentist. Monday, Zimbabwe's police and the National Prosecuting Authority had cleared Palmer of wrongdoing. Oh, I bet they did. Through an advisor, Palmer declined to comment. 
Palmer was identified as the man who killed Cecil in a bow hunt. Cecil, a resident of Hawanj National Park in western Zimbabwe, was well known to tourists and researchers for his distinctive black mane. So Cecil was killed by a, by a bow, an arrow. If I'm not mistaken, he was shot with a bow, was not killed instantly, and was found elsewhere, if I'm not mistaken. Led to death, most likely, or... Mushinguri Kajiri had said in July that Zimbabwean police and prosecutors would work to get Palmer returned to Zimbabwe to face poaching charges. On Monday, however, Machingiri Guri Kajiri said of Palmer, he is free to come, not for hunting, but as a tourist. Palmer was subject to extradition. Talk in Zimbabwe and a target of protests in the United States, particularly in Minnesota, after he was identified. Yeah. Hunting, aside from the acquisition of, of meat for food, no, this was just for... This, this is... Look at me and look at my, look at my trophy room. It's an extension it's of his manhood, his asshole, My God. Uh, uh, ego, egomaniacal, selfish manhood trophy. There's no reason, logical reason, to kill uh, any animal for trophy reasons, uh, especially if they're endangered. Especially if they're supposedly on a protected area. Yeah. Um, yeah, like like the, the black and white rhinos have been made extinct because of the, this ridiculous notion that their horns have some kind of medicinal value. Use deer antler. They use deer antler horns in Asia, pulverized deer antler horns. You know, deers shed the, their antlers, the males, the bucks, you know, they don't even, you don't even have to like kill them to get the antlers. Oh, and not forgetting the, the uh, African elephants for their ivory, there's no need for it, you know, so some rich person could brag that they're, they're, um, Tchotchke in their living room is made from real ivory. Messages left on Monday with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, which was handling a U.S. investigation of Palmer, weren't immediately returned. Bet he's hated in the United States. By well, he animal, went back to work. By animal rights activists. He went back to work. Theo Bronkhorst, a Zimbabwean professional hunter who was a guide for Palmer, returned to court last week on charges of allowing an illegal hunt. He's the guide, he's responsible. He's supposed to say, no, we can't hunt here. Uh -huh. No, you cannot, you cannot target that lion. Yeah. His lawyer, Perpetua Dube, Perpetua. argued that the charges are too vague and should be dropped. They're not too vague, it said. You're at, it's an illegal hunt. What the hell's vague about that? Oh my God, the region is prohibited. <laughs> How could that be vague? <laughs> I didn't understand it, man. I, I, didn't, I didn't know anything. Hold on, hold on. Let me get the nutcracker. Hey, you, you over there, judge. Uh, you know, uh, the region is a little vague. 
you know, uh, how do you, how are we supposed to know we have to read signs? Yeah. No boy, there was no sign. No sign to, up there. You'll there was that. no sign to tell us we need to read another sign. You should have had a sign to remind us that there's a sign to remind us that there's a sign that we need to read. Yeah, uh, you know. Now. I'm totally confused. <laughs> well, you're confused because the whole thing is vague. Ah, that's what his lawyer said. Oh, gotta love it. A little holiday ventriloquism, even though I'm not a professional. Seven bells for uh, the King Nutcracker. Ugh. Something like 1.7 million documents have been collected by federal prosecutors during the course of the investigation of the George Washington Bridge fiasco. Oh, I hope Christie gets nailed before the end of his term. The trial is scheduled for April. April? That long? State Senator Loretta Line Weinberg, Democrat of Teaneck, New Jersey, said that the judge's opinion shows that the report was a political document. Oh, God. Weinwar Weinberg called the report a whitewash. <clears throat> the notion of the lane closures being a traffic study was the original cover story said Assemblyman John Wisniewski, the Middlesex County Democrat, who with Weinberg led the Special Legislative Committee into the lane closings. When the original cover story blew up, they had to hire Randy Maestro for eight million dollars to come up with an even better one. You know, the fact that so many New Jersey Democrats um, supported Chris Christie in his re-election. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets off scot-free uh, with this George Washington Bridge uh, case. Really, I mean, um, New Jersey is really a scumbag it's a possibility. part of the United States. Christie, who was due to attend a fundraiser in Los Angeles, on Wednesday night, co-hosted by a Gibson Dunn partner Boy, who worked on the bridge investigation, did not respond to a quest, request for comment. He sure spends a lot of time outside of New Jersey, doesn't he? As the record reported on Saturday, that partner, Deborah Wong Yang, continues to perform work for the governor's office at a rate of $350 per hour. Why? She's, guess who's paying for that? I guess she's, uh, for that kind of money, she's never wrong. Ah, she's always right. Uh, Yong, Yong is always, is never wrong. Oh, is it Wong or Yong? Yong. Oh, Yong. I'm sorry. Oh, Yang. Oh, Yang. Deborah Wong Yang. Deborah Wong Yang. Wong Yang. Is always right, never wrong. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. I'm Maestro. On roll. I'm on a roll. Johnny Maestro on the Brooklyn Bridge. The author of the Gibson Dunn Report, as well as a representative of the law firm, did not respond to requests for comment. How often is Christie actually in New Jersey? That's what I want to know. Uh, I believe <laughs> he was back here uh, either testifying or doing something in the legislature. Gee, I guess his wife is uh, must have a lot of uh, things to do, uh, being that her husband is uh, rarely home. You know, but she probably anyway. has breathing space. You know, when yeah, he's not home. You know, some sometimes uh, he occupies a lot of space. You know. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure mm -hmm. that he cracks many a toilet bowl too. Probably has a titanium toilet bowl. Michael Critchley, Critchley, who represents uh, Kelly, said, 
I have consistently maintained that the manner in which the maestro interviews were conducted were akin to a li deliberate flim-flam. Yeah. Titanium toilet seat. I, I must st correct myself. Not the ball. The seat. The court's words, in his opinions, opinion, were more eloquent, but have the same meaning. Michael Baldassare. Man, we, we got some interesting names with this Honestly reading. Honestly, God, what the hell? Who, represent, who represents Baroni. I would hate to uh, introduce these people. Said that every taxpayer in New Jersey ought to read Wigginton's opinion. Phony Baroni? We cannot say it any better. Baroni, at the time <laughs> of the closures, was the <laughs> deputy executive director of the Port Authority, the agency that operates the bridge. Kelly was Christie's deputy chief of staff best known for the eight-word email she sent to a Port Authority executive in August 2013. Time for some traffic problems in Fort Lee. That email was received by Wildstein, a Port Authority executive and Christie ally who ordered the closures. He replied simply, got it. Wildstein has implicated Baroni and Kelly in the scheme. Yeah. So is this an actual trial that's coming up this April of two, 2016? Okay. Attorneys for Baroni and Kelly who have denied the charges had subpoenaed Gibson Dunn for interview notes and summaries compiled during their investigation. But Gibson Dunn said it could not hand over such materials because they did not exist. Instead, Gibson Dunn said its attorney had typed notes into a computer and that those files were later edited into summaries. Wigginton noted that Gibson Dunn's decision not to keep a detailed record of interviews was highly unusual. Attorneys are trained to scrupulously document information when conducting internal investigations, including taking and preserving Contemporaneous notes of witness interviews. Contemporaneous. Wow. She added that although Gibson Dunn said not delete or shred not to delete or shred documents, the process of overriding their interview notes and drafts of the summaries had the same effect. Mm -hmm. Wigginton also denied the defense attorney's request for metadata, the electronic information that reveals the history and management of an electronic document, saying it was not relevant or admissible in the case. Hmm. Wigginton's opinion follows a November defense filing alleging that Christie's office improperly withheld thousands of documents from federal prosecutors in response to subpoenas. Now, as a pro former prosecutor, he's supposed to know better, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, Critchley and Baldassare okay. have also asked Wigan to force prosecutors to turn over more documents that could be critical to the defense, including the names of unindicted co-conspirators. Police were allegedly involved but not charged. Prosecutors agreed in late November to release the names as long as they remain under seal.
Hmm. Well, I'm glad to see they have not forgotten about the uh, bridge, infamous bridge, GW Bridge. Um, and uh, you got you got one of those a uh, funny uh, light ones. No, I do not. I have a Trumpy in front of my face. Oh, that's good. We'll make that the last. I have a Trumpy. We'll make that the last for the uh, uh, winter solstice Yule. Happy Festivus season. Is my Yule log. Donald Trump's Republican campaign for president is built on the same win at all costs. No second guessing confidence that made him billions in real estate and a star of reality television. Well, he definitely grabs the bull by the horns and the balls. Yet, in a recent interview with the Associated Press, the GOP frontrunner displayed rare, if fleeting moments of humility and introspection. Wow. He's, he's running. He's campaigning. No. I think I could lose a state, sure, said Trump, of the first three states to vote in next year's presidential primaries. If I came in second or third, I think that would be, you know, I wouldn't be happy because I want to win. In retrospect, Trump so does, also so, said, So do they all. Yeah. He might not yet have used the phrase truthful hyperbole in his 1987 book, The Art of the Deal. The phrase has trailed Trump in the 2016 campaign, as have questions about whether his pension for exaggeration and tenuous relationship with some facts would be appropriate for a president. Yeah, I heard Great Britain is not happy with Donald Trump. <laughs> no. They're boycotting him in every which way. <clears throat> I think maybe if I had the phrase to do over again, I'd use the word optimistic. Perhaps. I would want to be very optimistic, Trump said. You, I'm telling you right now, this campaign, after, after it's over, if he, if he loses, He'll be more famous and legendary than ever before. Trump displayed his signature bravado throughout much of the 30-minute interview with the AP at his golf course in Northern Virginia. He declined to name a single thing he has said over the course of the campaign that he wished he could take back. He repeatedly referenced his dominant standing in preference polls and the enthusiasm of his crowds. But the glimmers of self-reflection and self-awareness stood out. They offered a look at a side rarely seen at Trump's rallies and television appearances. Trump unexpectedly leaped to the top of the GOP field this summer and has yet to be knocked from that perch. With less than two months until the Iowa caucuses, his hold shows no signs of slipping. But people in early states often make final decisions close to voting day. I'd like to win, Trump said, and clean the table. History suggests that's unlikely, even if Trump does take the nomination. In modern history, a non-incumbent has never won all three of the early voting states. Iowa, New Hampshire, and South Carolina. Trump said that while he's doing very, very well in them, he was aware of the precedent. <coughs> Even if he were to lose one, he said, I won't lose badly. 